Hey guys, this is Drew with Akusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about two coins that we picked up recently on Etsy, and uh, they're pretty good. And so we're going to talk a little bit about the platform, uh, compare it to a few other platforms, and show you some awesome coins, but let's get this video started. Alright, so, I am a guy that likes to hunt for coins at shows, but also online. And so I use Instagram, Facebook, and eBay to basically hunt every single hour, try to find the best coins for you and for my clients. And so, sometimes it gets boring, sometimes it gets draining, and you want to start to look on uh, different sites and different platforms. And so, we ended up spending some time on Etsy. Um, and so I started just looking up random stuff. I think I looked up CAC coin or something like that. And I ended up stumbling upon these really nice Walking Liberty half dollars. Both graded MS66+, plus, both CAC approved. But the best part is that they are both beautifully toned. And uh, so very fortunate that we were able to find these on Etsy. Like we said though, we're going to talk about uh, a little bit about Etsy uh, later this episode. But for now, let's talk about some coins. Okay, so we're going to start out first with the two walkers. Uh, the first one that we have to show you is this 1946 Walking Liberty Half. Great MS66 Plus by PCGS with the CAC approval. The reason why, and we're actually going to show you some uh, show you some images of what this coin looked like online. But I thought this coin would look really nice in person. And then what happened was I got it in hand and it really just blew my mind. Uh, the photos are really bad, but I'm starting to get really good at trying to understand the photos and see kind of what they look like but the reverse almost looked like this in the photo and so I saw that it had a really nice immense toning on the on the reverse and I thought I would just take a risk on the obverse and man did it work it paid off greatly but I think this coin's accurately graded the luster is very strong I would grade this coin like a 66 um, but like I said the color and the luster really did push it over the edge for me it's just a beautiful coin now we're gonna set this one back in the collection because we really like just the just the story behind it, but also they're really a unique pair, these two. They were actually subbed at the same time and I bought them from the same exact dealer. So that's something that you should know up front. Both were, probably came out of the same album, possibly. Here is a 1947 uh, Denver Walking Liberty Half. Great MS66 Plus by PCGS. And if I kind of tilt it a little bit, you can see those rainbows going right where the uh, Liberty is. Just really beautiful. They call that an end of roll toner. And so this one's also really nicely graded as well. I did think this one had a shot at 67, but there is kind of a scratch or a light hit right underneath the flag on the left side, as you can see. I do think it might have a shot still, but it's a little bit of a weaker strike, which is a problem as well. But I just love the coin overall. And the thing that kind of made me think that it came out of the same album is when I flipped it over. This one has kind of a fireball reverse as well. I don't know. I really do love these. this pair. Got it for a good price after seeing them in hand. Pay a little bit up front, but sometimes you just got to risk it. Just like we showed off a few of our coins in the past when we got crappy pictures with them. Are you guys enjoying this video so far? We hope you are. If you guys are, please leave a like. Comment your thoughts down below of what you think of the video and... You know, where did you guys start looking for coins online when you were kind of moved uh, away from shows during the start of the pandemic to uh, now? It would be really interesting to see. We're trying to find new ways to source coins and look for coins, so any of your feedback would be great. And subscribe if you're new. we got new videos coming out every single week, but let's get back to today's episode. Hey guys, this is Drew. We are doing another whiteboard session. Hasn't... We haven't done it in a while, so please leave a like if you want more. We're going to be talking uh, this episode about eBay versus Etsy. Why we, uh, you know, why we sometimes favor, uh, you know, Etsy over eBay. Why it's a little bit more beneficial for you to maybe look on Etsy for certain coins and maybe find some new dealers to work with. But let's get started here. When you're looking at eBay to start off, we there's a lot of traffic. There's a lot of people posting, a lot of people purchasing. And there's also a lot of people that are looking on the site. Um, so sometimes you have to be quick, you have to be agile, you have to search many times a day to find a good deal. Um, 
And with that amount of through traffic, sometimes it makes it really hard to find the coin that you might be looking for because there's thousands of listings of certain coins. Uh, there, there, like I said, though, there is more variety. Uh, there's a coin for every person out there, probably on eBay. It just depends on what you're willing to spend. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, they're pretty good at authenticating coins. If there's one that's fake, that's a raw coin. If there's a fake holder, there's people that are constantly monitoring that on eBay so you won't get shafted or, or hurt in that way. Um, and there's a lot more trusted dealers. You're going to find, you know, Dempsey and Baxter. You're going to find U.S. Coin and Jewelry. Everybody that you really uh, see as a big dealer, like the Baltimore show or at the Fun Show, all those people are going to be on eBay so you can get in contact with them. And they also have a website. So sometimes it's just a great place to find uh, a lot of good dealers and get connected with them. But there's also some good things about Etsy. And what are those things? Less through traffic. And why would less through traffic mean anything for you? Because sometimes when people aren't posting as much and people aren't looking as much, uh, it, it opens up a lot more opportunities for you to find a diamond in the rough. And when you use Etsy, Etsy sometimes is a lot easier to find coins, a lot easier to negotiate with the seller. And why is it easier to negotiate with the seller? Because they're not going to get as many people that are viewing their posts like eBay is on Etsy. So when you think about it, and when we were talking about these coins earlier that we got, when you use Etsy, you can, you can negotiate with them easier because they know that it's on a platform that's not as competitive as eBay. And also sometimes you can talk down the price. I was able to talk down the price on those walkers, and maybe that's going to be the same case for you. Um, and like I was talking about, you can find a treasure in the trove, or you know, you can find a, a treasure on Etsy because it's just, there's not as many posts, but there's also not as many hunters. There's not as many people that are searching it every single hour or every single 30 minutes to try to find the deal. So Etsy really, there's a lot of people that aren't looking on it that are dealers and that are people that are trying to sell coins. And the fees are much less on Etsy than there are on eBay. So if someone has to pay anywhere between 8 to 13% on eBay, and they have to pay half of that on Etsy, most of the time that, that savings is going to go on to you guys. We passed on to you. Um, but like, you know, when we're comparing these, the ultimate question is why not both? And that's truly what you should do. You know, you should look on eBay, you should look on Etsy, and you should also use these up here, Instagram, Facebook, and AcousticCollectibles.com because why not? You know, it's a great place. But it, we, only, we only have so much time in a day, and so when you actually think about it, uh, you have to, you know, put it into perspective and put priorities on certain sites. And I would say Etsy is something that I would consider to start looking on because, like I said, less fees, more margins for, for dealers, and better uh, prices for you, and possibly some nice coins like those walkers. But thank you guys for watching uh, this whiteboard session. Uh, the one I wanted to show you next is 1932 Washington Quarter. This one's graded MS63 by uh, PCGS. The reason why it's probably graded MS63 is just because of the little lackluster. But the reason why I bought this one is because I, I like the date, 1932, 1932 S and D. I really do want to start looking and finding ones that are in rattler holders just because there's a pretty big premium in them and they're also just becoming more and more rare to find with more collectors moving into the space especially into the old holder space as we've been talking about in the past few videos also got another walker here this one is a 1939D uh, graded MS65 by PCGS this one hasn't been to CAC yet I don't think I'll send it but just a really nice stellar gem uh, 30s Walking Liberty Half. Do like the older holder as well. I'm really starting to buy a lot of these, so keep an eye out on the website if you guys do like these. We'd be happy to uh, sell you a few, talk to you about them as well. P putting a gold piece back in the collection this week. This is an 1893 2.5 gold lib. Uh, it's graded MS60 by PCGS. I don't know if it would CAC, but I wanted to give it a shot when they open back up around mid April. The reason why they bought this coin as well is because it has the 108, um, 108 cert number. And the story behind this really is that there's two really rare cert numbers. There's the 1080 and there's the 1081. I got the 1083586. So this is basically the 35th 186th coin graded by PCGS. There's not a big premium in these right now I mean, in terms of their collectability. 
but I want to start setting them back because as the as the hobby gets more exciting and more people come into it, I think that the first 10,000 graded are really going to start to catch on with a lot of people. And so I really do like the coin as well. Can't go wrong with a nice gold piece in a rattler. Went on eBay really fast and I had to buy it. Very pleased with what it looks like in hand. Got this coin in a trade this week from one of our viewers. This is a 1902S Barber Quarter, a MS61 by Annex. Pretty uh, tough coin to find in mint state, so was very pleased when it was offered to us. And uh, yeah, I think it's just a, a pretty nice coin. Starting to move into the Barber series a little bit more. Trent's going to be picking this one up because Trent loves the Barbers. I'm going to try to buy more though in the future just to offer more on the website. But we do have one we're going to share with you today. Here's an 1851 uh, large cent. This one's great, AU58 by PCGS. Still has some nice color to it. No distracting marks on the coin. I don't know, I've been I've been liking large cents a lot lately. Been buying a lot of raw ones, but this one is happens to be graded, so very uh very nice coin. Hope you guys can check that one out. Here's our last semi-graded coin of the video. This is a 1899 Barber Half, graded VF20 by NGC. I bought it because it looked pretty original. I don't think it would cack, but a still a pretty nice coin, and so very uh, excited to be able to share that one with you. Like I said, when we're not selling the nicer barbers to Trent, we're going to try to find some other nicer ones to share with you guys. There's a lot of clients that ask us about those, so we're going to make it an effort to find those for you. Here is uh, something we bought at uh, the Broken Arrow show, actually. Didn't get to share this one in the past few videos, but this is an 1878cc uh, GSA soft pack. The reason why I bought this one is because it kind of brings a little variety to the shop. Don't have too many of these available. And it is graded MS63 by uh, NGC. Then, you know, there, there is a lot of hits on the face there, but that's kind of what you're going to find with a lot of Carson Cities. They weren't treated too nice at the Mint. Kind of just thrown in bags, just like how the other Morgans were, but still pretty nice, beautiful coin. Beautiful piece of numismatic and U.S. history. And here's something my brother picked up this weekend. If you guys are wanting to start a three cent silver set, we got three right here for you. Um, this is an 1852, three cent silver, uh, low VF. This one's a little mid VF, uh, 1853, three cent silver. And this one's a XF Details, 1854, three cent silver. But we, we were sold this page by a young numismatist and we thought we got it for a good price, but if someone's wanting to fill these out, man, we got the coins for you and we also have the page. But Thank you guys for letting me share these coins with you. We hope you guys were blessed on taking a look at these walkers. And go check out Etsy if you guys can. But let's roll it to the outro. Hey guys, so just got to the post office. Got a few orders kind of to you know, ship off. But I wanted to take some time in this video. <clears throat> take some time in your week just to talk about two different buyers that are in the coin market. Okay. And this is what I've been talking about a little, a little bit about on the podcast, which we're going to share with you in a month or two. Um, but basically, there's two different things that people have. They either have money or they have time. And if you're somebody that wants to get in the coin space and you have a lot of time and you don't have a lot of money, what I would say going to co coin shows, um, finding deals, making connections, that's all very important. Um, and so and without what that really uh, amounts to is it amounts to more money because you're basically spending your time exchanging it for that money. Um, and so, you know, people find raw coins, they study raw coins, they want to grade raw coins, Those that takes time, that, that takes allocation of, of a small amount of funds that might turn into a large amount of money. And that does take a lot of time, like I said. But there's somebody else that has money in the space. There's a lot of people that have jobs, that run companies, that run businesses, um, and so that sometimes makes them have less time. They get home at eight, nine o'clock at night. They have families, they have things they wanna do. So it's necessarily sometimes they can't go to the coin show, they can't save that 10, 20% on a coin. They wanna spend it with you. They want to uh, have a seemingly, you know, seamless, easy transaction. And uh, something that I would advise for someone that's new in the space is that bring the coins to the person. Do not have them come to you because if you have them come to you you will have half the business a third of the business a quarter of the business um, and just understand that from the get-go because someone that's trying to save time wants you to be in their face when they are on their phone or on the TV 
or even you know even even in your neighborhood so I understand that um, there's two different types of buyers but that will really help you in the space it's kind of all on a pendulum we got money on this side and time on the other side and uh, as you kind of get acclimated to the space you kind of have more sales all of that's going to shift into uh, having less time and having more money so uh, you know and one person that I would really kind of prescribe this to or what I would say is someone that is like this in the space is Kenny from US Coin and Jewelry uh, Kenny Jr. doesn't have a lot of time. He's got a lot of money and he's got a lot of deals going. So um, when someone can help him out, bring him coins, stuff like that, that's someone that I would say doesn't have a lot of time, but they have the money to uh, kind of make everything work and find great coins. So um, just take this you know, um, as an understanding from what I see the coin space as, but thank you guys for watching this part of the video. So kind of a cool story from uh, the Broken Arrow show, which we didn't get to talk to you guys about. Um, we talked to one of our dealers that we like to work with and just ask for mentoring advice from. He actually bought the eight, the only 1893S Morgan dollar in a GSA soft pack. And so uh, what he basically did was he had a friend that he knew that was uh, passing it on and was liquidating a lot of the soft packs that they had. And he sold as much as he could, he looked for as much money as he could at the time, and he drove all the way to pick it up, and he said he was eating bologna sandwiches for a month or two um, after that, just because at the time, it was just such a great opportunity for him, and so really happy for him, really interesting story, and sometimes you have to sacrifice to get the coins you really love, and that one's just a killer, but... Uh, yeah, it's a really interesting story. If you guys did enjoy today's video, please leave a like. Uh, comment your thoughts about Etsy. Have you guys been on Etsy before? Checked out a few of their coins. Um, we all want we want to know that down below. And subscribe if you're new. We got new videos coming out every single week, talking about different things in the space. And we look forward to hearing from you. Uh, but we will see you guys in the next video.